Are you looking for fresh, cottage-style inspiration to decorate your home on a budget? Do you also wish that you could find the great secondhand treasures that others do? If so, this fun-packed video is for you. Today, I have a shop and style haul to share. We will be joined by a special guest and I will share with you a special announcement for your shopping interest. Hi friend, I'm Rachel, creator of the blog and YouTube channel Stone Cottage Home, where we cultivate the art of home from our heart with our hands. Today is one of those fun thrift and antique hauls. It has been almost six months since our last haul, and I've collected some fabulous treasures from Marketplace, thrift stores, antique stores, and other secondhand online shops. I will share with you what I've collected and then show how these items have become part of the story of our home. Also, I have two special treats for you. First, joining us today is the sweet Miss Carrie from the YouTube channel Cottage Diaries, and she will be sharing her thrift haul with you as well. Miss Carrie has a lovely curated cottage style home that she has been creating over time, and I've enjoyed watching her kitchen remodel and home updates. Her channel will be linked below. Be sure to take a moment to pop over and visit her beautiful home. And finally, stick around to the end of the video where I have an exciting announcement where you too can have access to the fabulous curated items like I find for my home.
Now on to the haul. We'll begin with practical things and then move towards the more decorative items. First up on the list is definitely practical. I found this bath mat at the thrift store for $5. It is extremely thick, soft and cushy, and brand new. That was a good buy. Then there is this tripod you're sitting on. Matt found this in the corner of the thrift store for $10. Perfect, because my other one had just broken. Next up, we all know a thrift haul wouldn't be complete without baskets. These that I have, I've got five altogether, and these that I have here are the more storage basket type. They're all square. This one has a metal frame, so it's very sturdy. These other two are seagrass and are oblong with the handles and the ends. And I plan to use these for organizing my linen closet in the hallway. These other two baskets are more decorative style and the ones that I will use in my pantry I love this style the best. I believe it is called Oak Splint. I love how it's woven and it has the picnic style handles. I can just imagine these being used in so many different ways. All of these baskets ranged in price from about three to seven dollars each. The last item on our practical list bridges into the decorative and it is this beautiful antique shelf. I saw an inspiration picture very similar to this years ago on Pinterest. And when I came across this shelf, which I believe was between seven to $10, I snatched it up. And I have plans to use this for organizing my fabric in my sewing room. For those of you who are new here, you may have guessed from the gallery wall behind me that I love art and you're right. I have picked up a few lovely pieces over the last several months that will go into the gallery walls I'm creating in other areas of our home. First up is this lovely equestrian English style print. It came in, this, in a pair, so here's the other one. They are lovely and I find that when you have a pair of frames, they are so easy to stack on a narrow wall and they look very intentional. This next piece of art is a shape that I don't often come across, but another one I find easy to use. It is this oblong landscape shape and this one is a watercolor. I just love this. It is in the winter time. This is one of those stone walls that you would find in England and this is a cross through from one piece of land to another person's piece of land with this cute little covered shed area. The glass is also slightly rippled, so I don't really know what the age is. And someone had this custom framed at Hobby Lobby and paid about $40 was the original ticket. I paid $4.55. I found another pair of art frames that were the same size these also came with a frosted glass. Now I don't care for the metallic bird prints, so I will be replacing it with art of my own, but these were a really good deal. Again, like I said, stacking this way, or of course you can stretch over this way. And I guess I've already taken the prices off. I would guess these were probably about $5 each. And I think they will make a very handy little addition to a gallery wall. This is another frame that I found with a little bit of a silvered edge to it. It's a warm silver though, so I think it would pair well with the brass and wood that I already have. The glass is just ordinary glass. Someone has put a poem in here. Um, I paid $2 for it, and I think it's an older frame because of the construction. It has nails going in the corners instead of being glued. So I think it will look really good displayed in either direction. This vintage sketch of Victorian ladies caught my eye. I love the black mat. I love the line drawings and the simplicity and the genteel graciousness. 
This is also another gently silvered frame that I like. I would probably replace the glass with frosted glass so there wouldn't be quite so much glare. This, once again, I've already taken the price tag off. I think it was about $11. And I think it would make a good piece to put in a gallery wall if you were looking to make it look a little bit sharper with this black matting and just give a bit of a different flavor for an eclectic feel. These next two pieces of art came from Etsy. This one appears to be a watercolor of Anne Hathaway's cottage. I've already reframed it. It came in a very different frame and I've added the no glare glass to it and this vintage gilded frame. The mat is kind of a mossy olive green and it has a linen texture to it. I love this orientation. It is so easy to tuck into little spots throughout the house. Plus, I love the cottage style. And in keeping with this theme, the other piece I just got in the mail this week is this tiny little print of Beatrix Potter's cottage. I just think it's so sweet. It says Beatrix Potter's house, hilltop, celery. I will probably reframe or remat this because this is a bit heavy for how delicate the print is, but I love the adorable little size. And of course, I have saved the best for last. One day I was popping into my nearest thrift store and I went straight for the row of carts where it's the new merchandise, priced and rolled out, but not yet stocked. And I found this antique original painting it is of a mother praying over her sleeping child. It is very dirty. <laughs> I am not sure what all is on it. And perhaps this is where some of you could lend a hand. I've done a little bit of research on how to have it cleaned or how to clean it myself, but I'm just concerned that I might ruin it. So if any of you have experience or could lead me to a source that would show how to clean an oil painting, I would be very grateful. So the way that I knew this was so old is look at the nail prints. You can see that the canvas is actually coming loose from the frame. Look at the age of the wood and you can see too from the back, this is actually linen that it's painted on and I just, Oh, I was just so delighted. It was one of those where I was trying not to squeal out loud. It was marked $10. But at this particular thrift store, they have a punch card system. And if you have a full punch card and your total comes to $20, then you get $10 off. So I set about finding other miscellaneous items till I hit the $20, then gave them the punch card and I averaged everything out, and this painting cost me less than $5. So I do have a margin where I could invest in having it cleaned. I would also love to have it framed with some kind of a, probably old wood with a brass inset. I'm, I don't know. Any input would be very welcome. Next to artwork, one of my favorite categories to shop for in home decor is lighting. It is one of the fastest, easiest ways to change the atmosphere and create a homey, cozy mood. In that arena, I am looking for both lamps and shades. 
Oftentimes you'll find a fabulous lamp, but it doesn't have the right shade or a fabulous shade and you still need the lamp. So I do have a collection of both and every once in a while you get the perfect pair. When I saw this Octagon Nantucket Red French Toile uh, lampshade, <laughs> I just loved it. It was about $3. Every panel has a different scene and I thought, it's just ready to go. Perfect. Now I just need to find a lamp. This next lighting find was a Marketplace score. It is this vintage tollware pendant. I guess you would call it a chandelier. It has the three lights with the cardboard covers, which I would replace with the beeswax looking hand dipped candle covers. So there was this one, and what really caught my eye was this one. Such a unique shape. I was wondering if it might work in our entryway. I think I would repaint it. I would uh, maybe do uh, sky blue with white trim. Either way, I thought both of these were such a good deal. Now, if you have a sharp eye and you saw our dining room makeover video, you noticed that in the video there was a French tollware lamp that I used to put on the buffet, but partway through the video, this lamp appeared and I just could not help using it. It is so beautiful. It's very heavy, has a brass top, beautiful blue and white designs and it was only eleven dollars and when i'm considering a piece like this i try to picture it in at least three places in my house then i have a pretty sure feeling i know it will be well used and i'll be able to change up my decor easily for the longest time i have been keeping my eye out for alabaster lamps to go in our bedroom i was hoping to find a pair that did not match, but were about the same size for that sense of symmetry that makes a room look instantly balanced and put together. But I was finding they are so expensive and I've been looking for, oh, probably a couple years when I came across this one, which is a trophy or urn shape. And it was at a store that's kind of a hybrid thrift and antique store called a Ventique and it was marked $38 and I was wondering why it was so cheap. I asked the lady if I could try it out. It worked perfectly and I thought it was beautiful. So with tax it came to $42. I was so thrilled. I could hardly wait to get home and show Matt. So of course I then began shopping in earnest for another alabaster lamp. This one popped up on Etsy. I love this shape even more. I love the leaf carving. It's uh, Italian marble, has a little bit of decoration around the base. Plus, I really like the rounded base versus the square base. And this one was a little bit more. I'll have to look the price up for you. But I figure since the other one was so cheap, that it kind of evens out. And then I needed to find shades. This lamp actually came with a scalloped bell shade. And I loved how it looked so much that I began looking for something similar for the other alabaster lamp. Let me show you what I found. This lamp was a little bit smaller, so I knew I had to find a shade that was a scalloped bell but slightly smaller than the other one. And here's my trick on finding a shade that fits your lamp base. You want to be sure that across the bottom of the shade at the widest part, it's the same measurement as from the bottom of your lamp base to where the neck stops. So I found this one at the thrift store and did the test. So you see there, perfect. The idea is that when it is sitting, you don't see any of the fittings under here. 
Isn't that beautiful? At some point, I would like to replace the fabric on both lampshades with a matching blue and white print and do a pleated style on top of this beautiful scalloped bell. Besides art and lighting, I love to look through dishes of many different sorts. And as many of you know, we are in the middle of our English country kitchen remodel. So there are many things I have been collecting since January that are not included in this haul because I'm saving them for the kitchen reveal and final tour. I will share a couple of things that are similar to what I'm looking for. I have had this octagon ironstone platter for quite a while. I love the shape. I love the beaded edge and it has delicious crackling in the middle that gives it that antiqued look. So I knew as much as I've used this one and loved it, that I would also love <laughs> this one which is a size bigger. I have used these already as stacked layer to display on my buffet, but I also think they would make a gorgeous wall hanging, just one right over the other, kind of giving it a butler's pantry feel. So this is one of the things that I've bought with my kitchen in mind. Practically speaking, I also have been collecting simple white ironstone serving bowls. This one I love the oval shape, but I also love this ribbed interior pattern. Simple, but so elegant. And of course, what would a kitchen be without a little blue and white? I found this pair of salt and pepper shakers at an antique store. I don't remember what I paid but it was probably about 12, maybe $15. They are just lovely. They remind me of Courier and Ives and look beautiful sitting on our dining room table. Then for the last share in the kitchenware category for now is this amazing blue and white sugar bowl. It's probably over a hundred years old it does not have a maker's mark and as you can tell it is pretty badly cracked and crazed and stained the back side has a little bit more but i think it is still incredibly elegant i love the little fig shaped knob on top and these perky little handles i am hoping to fit this into my bookshelves in the living room then, to wrap up the sharing part of the haul, before we get to the styling, the last thing I picked up was this adorable little needlepoint pillow. It was only two or three dollars. I love the colors. It has a green velour backing and this thick green velour piping. Just perfect for adding that English cork and whimsy to your home. Now friends, the very most fun part, styling with our thrifted and antique finds. I was hoping this pair of alabaster lamps would elevate our room, give it a sense of symmetry and intention. I like the fact that the lamps don't match, but they're tied together by material and the style of the shades. And I really love how they look in our room. I put the shorter lamp on the taller nightstand. And someday I do hope to do a blue and white shirred lampshade for both of them. I do have an entire vision for this room, but that will be for another day and another makeover. In the meantime, I think this one layer of lighting has really brought our room to the next level. Now let's try out some new artwork on the mantelpiece that might look a little bit more like autumn. Swapping out your artwork for the changing seasons or a changing look or mood is one of the easiest most inexpensive ways to refresh your living spaces. 
This pair of English hunting prints was actually spotted at the thrift store for me by a friend who knows my style very well. I would love to see these with maybe a pine green mat and definitely frosted glass to cut down on the glare. Wonderful pieces. It is pieces like these with a masculine touch that help me not to make my surroundings too feminine. I have a small but growing collection of antique blue and white ironstone. I look for pieces that I love that are within a certain price range and my collection is slowly growing. Some of the pieces I have found on eBay and some of them on Etsy. Now to add that antique shelf to my sewing area. You can see in the reflection of the mirror on the armoire that I have a quilt going on my design wall. So once this shelf is up, I will be able to put my collections of quilt fabric on display, but also where it's accessible and I will be able to get right to work whenever I happen to have a spare hour now I can see all of my fabric, exactly what goes with which project, and it makes me so excited to dig into one of these colorful little bundles. Quilting is one of the most satisfying ways to add beauty to your home. The colors and patterns can be custom chosen to fit your style and color palette and it is an absolute joy to design a quilt for someone special and give it away. Do any of you like to quilt? Now let's style the buffet with our thrifted treasures. Here is the big blue and white lamp. I found a shade in my stash. There is the tray and the ironstone terrine from the living room. I really like the blue and white pattern against the wallpaper and the simplicity of the white ironstone. It has been such fun to watch this dining room and our living room come together very slowly. I have enjoyed the slow process, making sure that each decision is one we are happy to live with for years to come. I found the perfect spot for that landscape shaped snow covered fence shed. It looks like it's always been there. Which of these treasures that we found today has been your favorite? For your shopping pleasure, Stone Cottage Home is announcing the opening of our Etsy shop. These items have been carefully curated from secondhand stores and from my own stash to give you the opportunity to find those lovely things that create that English country cottage style we all love. The current categories are dishes, art, textiles, decor, kitchenalia, and I hope to be adding more soon. As with all new things, the shop is a small beginning and will be sporadically stocked High quality and great style are very important to me. I will let you know when a new flood of things has been listed. And in the meantime, I hope you find something you love. Enjoy! Wasn't that fun? Be sure to pop over to Miss Carrie's cottage and give her some encouragement. I am very grateful for every one of you and appreciate you taking the time to visit. Until next time, take care. Wasn't that fun? Be sure to pop over to Miss Cherry, Miss Cherry. <laughs>